أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيت إيه الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللانة الدائمة الباقي لعدائهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين ما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القران هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان صلوات الله عليه وسلم with the blessings of the month of ramadan we have been looking at the tafsir of surah ad-dukhan surah number 44 of the quran and we looked at the earlier ayat. Today I would like to go a little bit faster. I realize if I go with the speed I was going, we might not conclude the tafsir of uh, that surah before the 15th of Ramadan. Um, for tonight, we'll go a little bit more faster. We looked at the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala earlier talked about it where he emphasizes the point of uh, revelation of the Qur'an fi Laylatul Mubarakah and that is Laylatul Qadr. We looked at the importance of Laylatul Qadr uh, last uh, evening and at the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that inna kunna mursaleen. If you see the rhythm is there, kunna mundhireen in the earlier ayat that we discussed and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends with that ayat with inna kunna mur- mursaleen. Basically what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when it comes to the Quran or the process of prophets, you know, this is an ongoing thing. Just as he said kunna mundhireen, we have always been warning people. The same concept is here that we have always been sending guidance. And the word mursal means somebody who sends the message or the guidance. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that in human form as far as the guides are concerned in the form of the prophets and the messengers and the imams who came after them. And in, book, in form of books which came with some of the prophets uh, which became more or, le- more or less like the uh, constitution of those communities and nations. The, the words uh, mursal, uh, just to you know, familiarize you with some of the Islamic terminologies, mursal is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who sends. What he sends is known as risala. You know, risalat and nubuwat, that's the uh, product of uh, mursal. He sends the risala. And the one who receives it and who brings it is known as al rasul. Uh, Shaheed uh, Sayyid Muhammad Baqir al-Sadr actually in the preamble to his, uh, to his own Risala uh, he wrote a, actually a booklet on its own as a muqaddama introduction to his uh, uh, book on his decrees and his laws, uh, his opinions on fiqh. Uh, he named it Al-Mursil Al-Rasul wa risala or Al-Mursil Al-Risala wa rasul where he talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an, and the Prophet of Islam. We look at the conclusion of that entire uh, section that we discussed earlier. Allah ends ends by saying, رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الصَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ That the prophets who came, the books that that came, the Qur'an which is being sent down to you, this is based on the rahmat from your Lord, mercy of your Lord. Innahu huwa samiul alim. He is the all hearing and all knowing. Now, again, when we look at the process of you know, uh, guidance itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is because I have this mercy towards you. And when you look at this, uh, this process, the, the words as samiul alim, you know, in many, many places you will see in, in ayat of Qur'an, when Allah ends a section, He ends by describing Himself in different ways. And in most places He ends with two attributes, two sifat and qualities of Himself. 
those are not just picked randomly. Those names of Allah or the attributes of God at the end of the sections, they have relevance to the theme which came before it. If you look at this whole section from beginning to ayat number six, حَمِّيمَ وَالْكِتَابِ الْمُبِينَ إِنَّا نَزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ إِنَّا كُنَّا مُنْظُرِينَ فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ أَمْرًا مِنْ عِنْدِنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسَلِينَ رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ رَبِّكَ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الصَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ He chose these two names for himself for himself in this section: الصمي and العليم. A Sami, somebody who hears everything. Nothing is hidden from him. Al Alim, he knows everything. And this is relevant in a sense that when Allah talked about revelation of the Quran, that he sent the Quran down in the blessed night. And this was part of his mercy to provide guidance. This is where then he says, He is Sami and Alim. He hears our pleas and knows our needs. He knows that human beings, you know, whether they say it or not, they always seek guidance. What to do next? Where do I go now? You know, and, they, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that guidance is an essential need of the human being. And therefore, he provided it in form of prophets and in, the, in form of divine books. And therefore, he ends there by saying, إِنَّهُ هُوَ sami al-Halim." If you look at the ayat before, uh, let me go yeah, back here. Rahmatan min rabbika. Allah says that this whole process of guidance is a mercy from your Lord. Now we are talking about Quran revealed in the context of Makkah, where the majority of people are mushrikeen, they are idol worshippers. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now wants to clarify who is your Lord, who is your Rabb, that you know, who is being mentioned in this ayat. And so this is where we'll see the next uh, section, uh, which we will uh, discuss this evening, is description of this Lord that who sent the Quran to you. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, Rabbi samawati wal arz wa ma baynuhuma in kuntum muqineen. So it's all relevant. It's not that, you know, disjointed sections of the Quran. No, the Allah mentioned himself as your your Rabb, now he's describing who is this Lord that you have. Especially keep, keeping in mind that, you know, Mushrikeen, very much like, for example, Hindus of the present day. You know, if you go to India, you will see there is an idol for every different aspect of life. An idol for a God for life, a God for death, a God for sustenance, a God for children. You know, all different problems you have, you have to, you have to go to a different uh, mandir, different idol, you know, to pay homage or worship in order to get fulfillment of your uh, prayer. And so, Mushrikeen also were similar. They had this concept of multi multiple gods. Every god is in charge of one aspect of the universe. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like to shatter that image. And make it, very, make it very clear that He is the Lord. He is the absolute power there. And so this is where we see, He begins by saying that, you know, Rabb samawati wal arz. He is the Lord of the heavens as well as the earth. It's not that, you know, the God of the heavens is one and the God of the earth is separate. And not, not only that, whatever is in between, the heavens and the earth and whatever in, is in between the entire universe, you know, there is only one Lord. He is the one who has created it, and He is the one who manages it. In kuntum muqineen, of, of course, Allah says, only if you had conviction in what in the message which is coming to you. But you don't have that, because ma majority of mushrikeen did not really believe in that. And He goes on further to describe Himself. Rabb samawati wal ard wa ma baynahuma. And then the description goes on. There is no God except Him. La ilaha illa huwa. What does He do? Even when it comes to life and death, you don't have different gods for that. It's the same God who created the heavens, who is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is but between. He is also Yuhi wa Yumit. He is the one who gives life. 
He is the one who causes uh, death. And remember, it's not even a generational issue or time issue that the God of your time is one and the God of the people who were before was different. No, there is absolutely no concept of uh, you know, multiple gods in any shape or form that you can think of. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make this very clear and that's why he's describing himself in that way. Rabbukum, he is your Lord, not only your Lord, وَرَبُّ آبَائِكُمُ الْأَوَّلِينَ He is the Lord of your fathers who came before. بَلْهُمْ فِي شَكٍ يَلْعَبُونَ You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a comment about the people of Mecca that these people are still in doubt. يَلْعَبُونَ They are playing with the reality of their life. They don't really care. They do not take these issues seriously. That there is an akhirah and there is a very serious consequence if you do not follow the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this brings us to the end of this section. Inshallah, we'll go to the next one tomorrow. But let me go back to this concept of Rabbukum wa Rabbu Abaikum al Awaleen. The term Rabb, <coughs> we use the term Allah, that's his proper name. Rabb is also one of the names we use for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a difference between Allah as the name and Rabb. Rabb means somebody who is the nourisher, the provider. You know, uh, for example, we, we look at the mother or the, or the nurse who takes, up the, takes care of the baby. We say murabbiya. I think in Gujarati, uh, you have this concept for the elderly people. You call them murabbi, you know, in the sense that those who have taken care of the younger ones or the younger generations. You know, so this concept of rab is used when you are talking about Allah is the one who is providing sustenance. He is the one who is nourishing us. And we are marbub. He is the rab and we are the marbub. And so when this is used in that sense, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like the people of Makkah, the mushrikeen, he would like to know, let them know that, see, I am the one who provide. Not only you, but even your fathers who came before. And so the absolute power and the absolute source of grace and ni'mat of, that we see comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the Rabbul Arbaab in a way. And this is where we come to this uh, issue that if Allah is the Rabb, He is the one who is the provider. We get this problem from the Wahhabis. They say, look at you. You Shriyas, you talk about the concept of wasila. It's not wasita, it's a wrong um, spelling mis mistake there. Um, you consider the Prophet and the Imma and even other you know, righteous people who uh, the shuhada, for example, to be the wasita between yourself and Allah, not in worship but in dua. Bihaqti Muhammad, for example, when you pray, or you pray that they do shafaat for you, isn't this shirk? Allah is the one who is who is providing, and this is where we have to realize very clearly that number one, no Muslim. Can ever, any Muslim who knows anything about the Islamic faith will ever, never, ever doubt the overwhelming power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, uh, he is the one who created, he is the one who manages. But when it comes to this issue of wasila and the concept of shafa'at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about it in the Quran. You know, we can go to many, many ayat. Of course, people bring some ayat where Allah says there is no shafaat. Well, you cannot just look at one ayat in isolation. You know, you will see that there are about 17 or 18 ayat in Quran where Allah says shafaat of certain, certain people will be of no use on the day of Qiyamah. But then there are about 15 to 16 other ayat which positively talk about shafaat. You have to put all the ayat together and then you come to the conclusion that while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there are certain individuals whom I have chosen, they, ha they are authorized to be the intercessor. They are authorized to be the shafi'i. And in that sense, 
there wouldn't be problems. So it's not that Quran negates the concept of uh, wisatat or shafa'at. No, what the Quran says is that you have to make sure that when you make somebody your wasila or your wasita, that individual is among the authorized was, you know, wasila and the authorized shafi in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many, many ayat uh, regarding that. The second issue is that, you know, especially the Wahhabis, when we say, uh, they say to us that when you do wasila or, sh or you take somebody as a shafi, this is shirk. No, this is not shirk. Because when you look at the issue of a wasila or a shafi, you know, you have, you know, Allah is there, I'm here. Just in a hypothetical situation. Allah doesn't, re uh, there's nothing up and down as far as Allah is concerned. He's everywhere. But Allah is there, I'm here. And I consider, let's say, Imam Hussain alayhi salam to be the wasila in the dua or the hajat uh, that I have. Tell me in that process, Allah is there, I'm praying to him. And I'm making Imam Hussain alayhi salam the wasila there. If there is any shiraka, sharakat and partnership, is Hussain alayhi salam my partner in this process or is he the partner of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Huh? Where is the partnership? It's not up there, it's down here. I am making Hussain alayhi salam my partner. That, oh Imam, I have this hajat. Because of my own sins, there are barriers between my dua from reaching to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm making you my wasita, my wasila. Become my shafi, so that my dua can reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would have been shirk if Imam Hussain was considered to be partner of Allah. He is not partner of Allah. He is my partner here. I am making Imam Hussain alayhi salam my shafi. And so those who talk about this issue of shafaat and they consider it to be shirk, they have really missed the point completely. A shafi is not shariq of Allah. He is the shariq of the da'i, the someone who is, who is doing the dua. Salawat on in the same theme, look at the two words which came earlier in the, in the ayat. La ilaha illa huwa yuhi wa yumit. Now, yuhi wa yumit, he gives life and he gives death. He is in absolute control. You know, we don't believe like, you know, that Allah created a universe and became retired. He handed over everything to the malaika and to the awliya. No. He is there in absolute con control. Look at this ayat from Quran. Surah number 6, ayah 61. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the concept of death, what, what does he say? He says, Hatta idha ahadukumul maut, Until when the death comes to one of you, what happens? Tawaffathu rusuluna. My messengers, referring to the angels, the angel of death, and his, uh, those who work under him. They are basically rusul of Allah. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this ayat he is saying that when death approaches any one of you, my rusul, my angels come and give death to you. Tawaf, uh, the word tawaffa is the, in the sense of giving death here. Now you keep this ayat in mind and then look at another ayat. Allahu yatawaffa al-anfus hina mawtiha. Allah is the one who takes the soul at the time of death. How do you reconcile these two ayats? The first ayat is saying that it is the angels, malakul maut, who takes the soul. The second ayat is saying that it is Allah who takes the soul. Is there a contradiction there? And this is where we have to understand that, you know, if you look at Malakul Maut as somebody who is working independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah and Malakul Maut are equal, and that's shirk. And that's kufr. But if you look at Malakul Maut doing the same function that Allah is attributing to himself, but he says that Malakul Maut is doing best on my command. 
then to attribute this action of death to both of them with the hierarchies in the mind would not be shirk. There's no problem at all. You know, just to visualize uh, that, look at this, this issue. If we have God and angel on the same line, well, in my computer, it was all exactly in the same line everywhere. Anyway, there's some difference here. If we put a line, molecule mode, on the same line, that is shirk. If you say molecule mode, you know, text the soul, independent of Allah's will and command, that's shirk. But if you put it this way, then no, molecule mode does this best on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although Allah is attributing that action to himself, but it's really being done by molecule mode, that is actually Tawheed itself. And so this is how you look at the issues. If you're looking at it from the you know, horizontal point of view, there is shirk. If you look at things from the vertical point of view, there is no problem. That's actually the essence of Tawheed. And so when we talk about this issue of uh, wasila, uh, we have to keep this in mind. That when we talk about the Prophet and the um, Ahlul Bayt, we do not place them equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are awliya of Allah. They are ibad of Allah. They are servants of Allah. But Allah has chosen them, given them a special privilege to become the wasita between us and him. And as long as you keep that in mind, there is no problem. You know, we, we hear these issues of, can you say, Ya Ali? Well, if you say, Ya Ali, Ya Ali Madad, and you are calling Imam, Imam Ali independent of God, that's shirk. But I don't think any Shia who knows anything about Shiaism ever, you know, puts Ali and Allah on the same level. Yes, there are people who are known as Ghali, but they are not Shia. Who basically say Allah has retired, everything is done by Ali now. No, we don't believe in that concept at all. Whatever is being done by others is done by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so there we are looking at it from the vertical point of view and there wouldn't be a problem at all. And even, you know, many times we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do dua through the Ahlul Bayt, through the Prophet, you know, and we even say in our, you know, normal uh, talks, sometimes we say uh, this is, you know, the blessing of the Imam. And using those words, there is no problem as long as you have that concept very clear in your mind that Malikul Mulk is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the absolute power. All other power is dependent on his will. Let me end with one uh, story here. Um, this is from our sources where once uh, Abu Hanifa got the opportunity to sit down and have dinner with Imam Jafar Sadiq al -Islam at his home. So Imam became the host there and Abu Hanifa was the guest. At the end of the um, dinner, our sixth Imam raised his hand and he you know, thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what he said, he says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, that all praise be to God, thanks uh, to God for this uh, food. Allahumma haba minka wa min rasulika. He thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he acknowledges that, oh Allah, this blessing that I had of the food today, this is from you and from your Rasul. According to the narration that we have, Abu, Abu Hanifa says, Ya Aba Abdullah. Ja'alta ma'allahi sharikan. You attributed this food to Allah and, and Rasul. You have made Rasul the sharik of Allah here. And that is where Imam responds to him by saying, Waylak. You know, you don't even know about this. In Allah Ta'ala yaqulu fi kitabihi. And then he recites two ayat. I'll just read to you one. وَلَوَنَّهُمْ رَضَوْا 
ما آتاهم الله ورسوله وقالوا حسبنا الله سيؤتين الله من فضله ورسوله that if this people were satisfied with what Allah and his messenger has given to them referring to charity here وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنُ اللَّهِ and they would say that you know this is uh, Allah is sufficient for us you know Allah says that they would be given from the grace of Allah and his messenger even more and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know includes the, prof, pros, uh, the prophet himself in the fuzzle that he's talking about the grace that he's talking about in another ayat وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ means they actually they have hatred towards this faith because um, you know coming to the good people Allah has blessed them from his grace and the grace of his prophet and so this is where you know Abu Hanifa when he had these two ayats from the Imam he says Wallahi ma ma it seems as if I have never heard this ayat before he was so surprised when Imam applied these two ayat to his, uh, you know, statement of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attributing the rizq to Allah as well as the Rasul. And so as long as we keep that hierarchy in mind, there would be no problem. We, are, we will be definitely on the path of Tawheed. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ضاب النار برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين